up guys so this is a review on the 2JZ GE to GTE adapter flange so this flange is designed and made in the USA and they are cut on water jet machines the sample shown is made out of 3 8 aluminum but they come in various sizes like quarter inch and half inch and after they're cut they are resurfaced flat on both sides and then another texture finish is applied to promote better sealing since these do not use traditional gaskets unfortunately you have to use rtv or foam and fleece gasket or something equivalent but it's easy enough and it works now we're going to install the adapter flange to the lower 2jz intake runners before i did that i took the studs out and i cleaned the threads i used an m8 by 1.25 inch tap and then i recleaned everything then i used the supplied hardware which is m8 um, socket head caps six of them I installed those I snug them down and from there we're gonna see what we have to do to match the ports so in these next couple clips we're gonna show you the ports from the adapter flange side looking towards the head from the GE head side to the adapter flange and then a view from the adapter flange to the GTE manifold and the match porting is very minimal and most of it is going to be done on the flange and we're going to take a look here in a second so right here we're going to see cylinder one and everything you see you're going to match to the adapter flange and vice versa so on this side you're going to match all of the runners to the adapter flange which is not much very minimal but on the, on the other side what you'll see in a second you're going to match the adapter flange to the GE runners like right here when you look down you'll see like a half moon on some of them it'll be like towards the top left or the right and that protrusion that's the GE to GTE adapter flange that's the part that you're gonna have to modify it's not much just port match it to the inner diameter of the GE runners and you'll see right here also it's not too much There you go again you're just gonna knock that down and you're gonna blend that in this one doesn't have too much total time for this should take like 15 minutes it's not too bad and this is the last runner now here's a view of the GE GTE adapter plate and is bolted to the GTE upper intake manifold. And as you can see the little protrusions on the bottom of the runner right here or any of the runners, you're just gonna have to blend that in, port match it to the adapter plate, the adapter flange and vice versa. So you're gonna also match the adapter flange to the inner diameter of the GTE manifold. And we're gonna go down each runner so you can see what you have to do to modify and it's not much most of the modifications are done on the flange so now you're asking why would you do this and why wouldn't someone just go aftermarket front facing intake manifold well you can you can go either way you want it just depends on on your taste your preference your budget some guys like the oem twin turbo aesthetics that classic gte look with the GTE valve covers. Some people just want to get rid of their crossover pipe, reduce their piping, reduce heat soak, reduce clutter on a budget. And if you have a GE VBTI motor and you want like a reliable 280, 300, 350 wheel horsepower, you could utilize the Aristo GTE VBTI ECU, the harness, the fuel system, and that'll be a great starting point. You can even go as far as use the, the A340 trans from it, the LSD. Do the internals a little bit. Massage the fuel system and maybe it'll support 600 to the crank. Now here's a visual reference of the GTE manifold installed on the mock-up motor. Looks pretty good. We'll do another video of the GTE valve covers installed so you can see that too. You can use the TT power steering reservoir and top fitting, but here I'm using the, 
the billet and fitting from PHR Powerhouse Racing. It's a very nice unit. Now we're gonna take a look at some measurements. I use a one pound piece of wood on the top of the GTE intake manifold, and I set it on top of the flash casting with the ruler, protruding out to the valve cover. We're gonna use the lowest part of the valve cover as reference. So just look at this video and copy it to see where you stand. And as you can see, we're at four inches. Now this is an estimate. The next one, we're gonna use the lower runner and the base of the runner to the top of the manifold is at seven inches. And then we're gonna show you another view from the lowest part of the valve cover to the top of the manifold from the front of the engine. Now I forget if this is an IS300 or a GS300 dipstick, but this is the OEM dipstick and there's no provisions to mount it after the modification has been done. But what we have found is you can put it in front of the first runner without even bending the tube and it fits pretty good. But to mount it, you'd have to bend the tab that's on the oil dipstick. If you bend it up and slightly to the left, there's a bolt hole on the flange that you can actually meet up with. And it actually works pretty good. And I'll show you here one second. It's under that rubber hose and it's a 10 mil. Right there. And then you can bend this tab on the dipstick and it should bolt right in. Oh shit, the ice cream man. I'll be right back. First, this is a view of the OEM GTE VVTi dipstick. It's a little short from the OEM mounting point by about two inches. So since this guy's getting billet valve covers and billet everything, we're gonna take these GTE valve covers and throw them on the GE motor on the side of the house. And we'll check that out later. If you liked this video or found it useful, please hit the like and the subscribe button be very much appreciated. Until then, have a good one.